At the very least, we've made it into the playoffs. We're here with two games left to play. We've got a big injury decision to make about George Connor, but first, I want to take a look at the news, actually. That's not what I wanted to do first, but I just thought about it. Let's see, just in case there's any more draft stories. No, not since the last time we looked. I know there's specific dates, I think, when they come out. I just forget to, you know, remember when exactly they are. Anyway, what I want to do is take a look at the awards, see how they're shaping up to see if there's anything specific we need to try and help our players do to get them as much XP as, as possible. So defensive play of the year, I wasn't actually going to show, but Hunter Washington is right there in the race at number three. Who knows how close it is, but here's what we're here for. Offensive rookie of the year. Think about how many games George Connor has missed and he's still number two. The next guy, Darian Ponder, he's also a wide receiver and well, we've just played him last week. Um, the other guys, I'm not too sure about where they play, but Philip Andy at the favorite right now, somehow. I guess he does score some touchdowns with his feet as well, which makes all of his numbers look better. Defensive player of the year, it's Rashad Bass, number one. Now, I think Kiwan Hardwick should be a lot higher. He has been playing ridiculously since about week eight. He absolutely turned it up when he got two interceptions and a touchdown. Last week had one interception, one forced fumble. But then again, Rashad Bass before that had one interception, one false fumble. His numbers are probably ridiculous. We'll take a look, obviously, at that at the end of the season. But I can only imagine how crazy they are. But that is it. I mean, we can take a quick look at all the positions. I doubt we're going to be here for any of them. But no, we're not. So let's just move on quickly. My oh, look at that. Best linebacker. That would be great for Hunter Washington. If he manages to lock this down, that'd be great. Because obviously, that's a lot of XP for him as well. So... We can hope there Justin Tucker gets best kicker or looks like he's going to get best kicker. So that is the situation, the shape of things right now. We're 11-3. and three. We've got a game ahead of the Steelers. We've locked down a wild card spot at the very least. We've got the Texans and the Dolphins. Two away games to finish the season. We will not be bringing out George Connor for the second to last game because there's no point bringing him back early. Let's take a look at what the impact would be. And consider... Oh, it's only to be fair... It's only awareness, injury, and strength. Now, 59 to 50 really isn't a problem. The awareness, 65 to 55. How important is that for a receiver? I don't actually know. Um, but to be honest, if we don't play him, he'll keep this ridiculous average he's had this season, which is, you know, inhuman. But we could also get some double XP for Juju Smith-Schuster if we decide to start him even though he's not actually his backup. So we can take advantage of the fact that they think he's his backup, although he starts on that side. Get the one receiver that we will be keeping out of the guys outside of George Connor. Let's do that. Let we know we don't need to bring him back for this game. It's got to be tough against the Texans, but we don't need him back. It will be a bad decision to make before the playoffs risk him getting injured. So that decision should have maybe been made after we take a look at this Texans team. So that first player we actually see changed. Everything else is identical. Jason Newhouse, the rookie tackle, 84 overall. They didn't get a bad pick there. Their right guard is second-year player Craig Everett. You never know with these teams whether they've changed to a 4-3 or not, but I saw Whitney Merciless, so I think they have done. Look at this one. Jadevian Clowney's there at defensive end as well. That would mean we might see a lot of David Onyemata, an ex-Fire Cell franchise player, of course. The left outside linebacker, Stefan Anthony. And it's a full-blown reunion. Kevin Pierre-Lewis. They're starting right outside linebacker. Interesting to play against him, of course. We are well aware of what he can do. The cornerbacks, Kevin Johnson, PJ Williams, and Justin Coleman. What I look at when I see the speeds is nothing like, oh, we can burn past them. What I see is the fact that if Kevin Johnson goes up against Judas Smith Schuster, Judas Smith Schuster won't be slow. They're free safety, Ladarius Webb, so you know they've got some ex Ravens players, they've got some ex Fire Cell franchise players. Let's take a look at the strong safety, Mac. It's Gilchrist. That is the team. Now, having looked at the defensive backs, I would have liked to have, you know, some burners on the field, but we've got one. Well, we've got a crazy one in Ashley Stokes with his 97 speed, so he should have a field day regardless of who covers him. And, you know, Philip Van Dyke. We, last week we gave you a pass. We said, all right, maybe next week now that you're aware of your expectations. Your offensive line is playing with confidence, which means, you know, trust them and let's get it done because 
We just need to make smarter decisions. Let's stop thinking about his ability and start thinking about his decision making and we may see a big change. Here we go, the penultimate game of the season. It's going to be a pretty tough one. These Texans have been playing well and they start out here with a run from a spread formation. So we didn't expect that and they go run heavy again as they continue here. Rashad Peters just managing to get enough contact to make the tackle here. But first and 10 from the 11, Deshaun Watson now rolling out to the right. Looks like he's going to run for it himself but Tyce Bowser reacts just in time to come down and tackle him. Second and two, they try and run again. Lamar Miller is stopped there. And then on third and one, it's a bunch of guys ready to stop him. There are about four defenders in for the tackle. We hold him to a field goal. Second and eight now with Philip Van Dijk rolling out to the right. Lofting that pass there for Juju Smith-Schuster. Throwing it near three defenders, but it was perfectly placed. And on a second and four, Trevon Bromley finds a nice hole and picks up the first down. Third and eight now looking to pass for the first down. Buying enough time to find Ashley Stokes here for the first down. He made one man miss. Gets tackled from behind. And third and eight from the 23. And it's a completion there to Kurt Weeks. Another first down. Second and eight. Jaquan Barber doesn't even have to run over everybody. Although he was already ready to do it. And he gets into the end zone. So the score now 7-3. The Texans here on third and 15. Deshaun Watson not able to find his man on that one. Good coverage there from Terrence Brooks. First and 10. A lofted pass for Stokes. Stokes makes the catch. Gets away from one man. Gets away from a second and is finally tackled. What a great run after the catch from Stokes. He doesn't let the first man get him down. He tries to fight away from the next two guys. But it's just a great run. And seeing it in slow motion looks even better as he just fights through that contact and is finally brought down. So on second and three, we go Trayvon Bromley. And Trayvon Bromley gets into the end zone. So we see two rushing touchdowns to start this off. We're up 14-3 to three and the Texans on third and six do manage to find a wide open receiver there. Marlon Humphrey left behind in coverage. Rashad Peters finally makes that tackle at the two-yard line. They go for it on first and goal with they run and uh, don't ask me what happens there. Tim Williams gets spun around, cannot make the tackle and they get in for a touchdown. But on first and 10, 14 to 10, we go with a run with Trayvon Bromley and Trayvon Bromley has the speed to get away from these guys. He's not that fast, but he's fast enough and he gets in for a touchdown. We extend the lead again now, 21 to 10, 11 point lead. And now the Texans looking to make something happen, but Deshaun Watson is not going to get away from Q on Hardwick there. First and 10, dropping back to pass, moving to the right, then lofting one up there, catches out our man Kalen Borum in coverage, had no chance on that one. First and 10 from the 19-yard line, the handoff to Lamar Miller, nobody's able to really make a great move here. Borum had him but cannot bring him down and nobody tackles him, he's into the end zone for a touchdown, so now the score 21-17. to On that screen, Bernadrick McKinney just making a great play, we weren't able to get any more points before the half ended, but we start the second one here, second and 21, Trayvon Bromley running, but we had to give the ball back, and they've got it here at the 22-yard line now, Lamar Miller with a big run, fighting through the contact of Hardwick, tackled at the two-yard line, and now third and goal at the four, and they zip one in to Will Fuller, he makes the catch, Casey Jacobs got there a little bit late, first and 10, now we've got to try and get some points back, and that ball off the fingertips, of Judas Smith-Schuster, third and eight, rolling out, gets sacked before he can let go of the ball, and now they've got it again, up 24 to 21, back in our red zone, but Rashad Peters makes a great play there to come off his man and get the sack, but on second and 13, they run with Lamar Miller, he is not stopped, no tackles there, and he is into the end zone, the score now 31 to 21, eight minutes left in this game, a 10-point deficit after an 11-point lead in the first half. 21 to 31, we've got to get something here first and 10, but instead Van der Yacht, as he was trying to just get out of trouble there, couldn't see anyone open his hit, loses the ball, the Texans have it, a completion there to DeAndre Hopkins, and now they've got a 13 point lead, 34 to 21, third and four, sack fourth and 15, we've got to get something here, although at this point, what is even going to work, but that might just work, Ashley Stokes with a huge reception, Ashley Stokes with the touchdown, and that might just save us enough time, we go for the two point conversion here, don't get it, but it's still a seven point game and we've just got to stop them running the ball and that is what we do on third and 11. So we have the ball, 30 seconds, Philip Van Dijk throwing deep, trying to get something to Tariq Cohen and it is picked off, ex-player Ladarius Webb with the interception, we had to force something, no timeouts and we lose the game. Now, as I think back on that game, I don't actually know where we lost it because... You know, we were doing well and all of a sudden I realized the score was much closer. Then suddenly I realized we were actually behind and I can't figure out where it went wrong because actually everything was going quite well. I think it's the fact we couldn't stop him on the ground maybe. But you know, Philip Van Dijk actually stepped up this time. You know, 70% completion percentages. One interception came right at the end where, you know, you've got to force something. Maybe there was something open on the left side of the field. But, you know... You can only look one direction, and when you think you've got something with 20 seconds left or whatever we had, you've got to try something. So, you know, it was it was going to be hard to do that, and we can't blame Philip Van Dijk, of course not. 
Trayvon Bromley had himself a nice day, 14 attempts for 143 yards and two touchdowns. Jaquan Barber got himself a touchdown as well. Receiving, Ashley Stokes, <laughs> a big day for him. Six receptions, 185 yards, and no one else really got a piece of those things. He just had a great day. Blocking, let's not talk about it. Really, don't talk to me about blocking. However, the tackles. Hunter Washington, he's in competition for Defensive Player of the Year, and he put in something good here today with 11 tackles. Kewan Hardwick with 10. He's still trying to fight for that Defensive Rookie of the Year, but Rashad Bass right there at the top. Sacks, one for Rashad Peters, one for Tyce Bowser. Too many good rookies on this team. No interceptions, uh, no forced fumbles, and of course what they got was a fumble recovery. That's maybe where it went wrong. Turnover, right? We didn't get any, they did. And that's always going to be it. An, an age-old story that will always be true. Turnovers win games. So one player has regressed. Want to take a guess who it is? I'll give you a hint. It's Philip Vandiact, and it's because he keeps getting sacked. Oh, look, it's Philip Vandiact, and it's because he keeps getting sacked. Who is letting us down? I don't actually understand what is supposed to be wrong with this line. They're a great run-blocking line, and that's why they've all got confidence. That's why they'll probably end up making the Pro Bowl, but they absolutely shouldn't, because they are not protecting Philip Vandiact whatsoever. But... You know, they can run block, so give them that at least. Outside of that, of course, next week will be huge, as back here will be our man George Connor, the best wide receiver in the NFL, possibly. I don't know. Maybe not. I mean, he's got the craziest average, but before that, we've got to scout the next best wide receiver, because that's what we're on right now. What do we see here? Not much, but we can keep taking it down here. Uh, we can take it really late to be honest think about where we found George Connor That's why you want to really go through every single round with these guys Of course you could wait and save yourself a lot if you just look at combine results I'm going further when it stopped, but just combine results You won't have enough points left at that point probably to really take a look at everyone that's worth it Although you probably could to be honest because speed kills and you know zero speed all that does is kill your chance to get anything We've seen that with Juju Smith shoots a good receiver maybe not fast enough that's his only downside. But of course, as a possession guy, that's not a problem. We just have to use him different. So here we go. We shouldn't have fallen to the Texans. And I feel like maybe it happened, or maybe it wouldn't have happened if we had George Connor back. Now, he will be in the wrong position. That's not where you play. You play there. That is where you get your points, your scores, your thousands of yards. That's well, actually not thousands of yards. Unless he has a crazy game. And to be honest, why wouldn't we, you know, not directly try and do it but of course why wouldn't we be aiming to get over like close to 300 yards with George Connor he is that kind of receiver and it's the first game back before the playoffs why not get him warmed up now playoff picture we'll take a look at it before this game starts but the 4 and 11 Dolphins it's a good game to end with because hopefully they're not too good and it gives us a chance at the win that we need here to go 12 and 4 to finish the season we did lose four games but we also won 12 of them finally we're where we want to be so is he worth mentioning I don't know but Hanson Simonson either that guy's second generation or fresh off the boat but he's a 91 rated fullback I mean, how important is he going to be? I don't know, but 91 rated second year player. The wide receivers still as we know them, and it's worth mentioning because obviously that's crazy. 91, 91, 92, they're all fast, they're all good. This will be a tough matchup for probably the best secondary in the NFL this season. Tight end Cameron Bray only makes it that little bit more difficult. Right end is Khalil, a second year player out of Florida. Sivy Hina. What a, what a name they came up with there. Well, not came up with. What a name they dug out of the archives there. Their middle linebacker, rookie Merrill Ferris. He probably thinks he's pretty good, but he's not as good as Rashad Bass. The cornerbacks are pretty good group. Maxwell Howard Tankersley. Free safety. How has this happened? I don't know, but it's Marcus Williams. You know, sometimes these things happen and I'm not going to make any jokes. So we've looked at the team. George Connor is absolutely dying to get out onto the field. So we won't, you know, hold you any longer. Let's just get out there and play. Final game of the season here at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Playing the Miami Dolphins who don't have a great record, but don't let that fool you. They're still a good team. First and 10, they go for a run here and they get the first down with Kenyon Drake. Second and 10, they try to go for play action. Tyus Bowser was there, but Ryan Tannehill just set off right at the right moment and he got away from him. Third and six, stepping up in the pocket, now rolling out to the right, really moving around a lot, trying to throw it downfield. Does throw it downfield for a completion. Q1 Hardwick with the tackle. Third and nine, they try and run it here and we do manage to stop them. He just ran into a pile and couldn't get any further. So, three point lead for them, but we run here with Philip Vandiat who ran through the safety of Rashad Jones, but then unfortunately there was another man there to tackle him that would have been a great play to start the game for us but here we go here's our man George Connor with his first catch coming back from injury 
Second and ten now, looking for a pass deep down the field. And he finds Trayvon Bromley. He was matched up against the safety. He saw that. He went for him and he gave him a chance and he gets a 41-yard touchdown on third and two. Terrence Brooks stops Kenyon Drake for a loss and Kenyon Drake is injured on that play. First and ten here, a great catch by George Conard. He's just straight back to his old tricks. Third and eight now, looking to pass after the play action. Philip Andiak now trying to loft that one to Ashley Stokes, but just a bit too much zip, not enough air, and he couldn't get it to him. Now on third and nine, that is the replacement for Kenyon Drake, the running back running over people. Finally tackled by Rashad Peters, but it's a great pass there. First and ten now, Tanny Hill rolling to the right looking like he's going to run for it he does that but Hunter Washington was there to stop him but second and inches now at the 16 yard line a quick pass out again it's that one running back we didn't expect to have to deal with in this game we thought Kenyon Drake was going to be the guy but no he gets a touchdown there and he's filled in for him perfectly and on a first and 10 here that's just a bad throw thrown behind the receiver and Xavier Howard was just there to take that it probably wasn't the best decision either but it was a terribly placed throw first and 10 now as we have the ball back but down 13 to 7 Trayvon Bromley's trying to make some moves at the sideline but it's a good run regardless first and 10 we're looking to pass here Philip Vandiak stepping to the right throwing it deep might just have his man George Connor it was thrown not far enough and he gets hit before he can really make the catch second and 10 trying to go deep again but he gets sacked before he can let go so third and 17 it's not a great play but he lets go of that one right on time for George Connor puts it where he needs to be and he gets the first down first and 10 and we're running with Jaquan Barber Jaquan Barber tried to truck a guy didn't have to and he's into the end zone two weeks in a row now where he looked for that contact didn't even have to get it and he's in for a touchdown that is Jaquan Barber that is what he does now on their kickoff they return it here we've had a one return touchdown before but no it's a fumble and we recover it we have the ball or do we know we don't it was reviewed and it was overturned so we don't actually get that play and instead the Dolphins now moving down the field first and 10 with the 41 yard line 27 seconds left but a great stop by who else Rashad Peters second and 13 now going again the ball is out again but it's recovered by the Dolphins so they have a chance here third and four the clock has now run out time is over so we just have to stop and get in the end zone but he has a gap here but he does get pushed out of bounds eventually by Tyus Bowser third and eight now in the second half Philip Van Diet gets hit fumbles the ball the Miami Dolphins recover we had a 14 to 13 lead but now they've got the ball we do stop them here on third and inches so we have a chance again now as we held them to three points Jaquan Barber with the big run again on third and inches picking up the first down first and ten from the 43 lofted pass there on a corner out to George Connor with another reception George Connor right back to where he left off now, second and 12, the worst thing about this throw wasn't the fact that it really shouldn't have been thrown and that cornerback perfectly baited Van der Yacht. It was the fact we had a wide open receiver in the middle, which was only seen as we look at the replay afterwards. But the wide open player would have been there for a touchdown. Instead, we throw an interception that is taken back for a touchdown. So now the score, 23 to 14. Second and 21, it's a great pass there. We get the first down, second and 10. It's a completion there to Juju Smith-Schuster. Guy's making catches right now. First and 10 from the 38, going deep down the field for Connor again. And again, it's too far out in front of him. Sometimes it's too far behind. Sometimes it's too far out in front. And he just can't make the catches right now. Trayvon Bromley though with a nice run on first and 10 but that was it we had to settle for a field goal score 23 to 17 Tyus Bowser comes in with a nice sack third and 14 now if we can stop him here it'll really do us a lot of good with only four minutes left in this game and Tyus Bowser does it exactly that third and 10 we have the ball we're rolling out Philip Van Diet looking to pass no he's looking to run he gets one blocker great block in all honesty on third and 10 he picked up the first down first and 10 at the 25 it's a quick pass over the middle to George Connor who keeps fighting wants that first down and he gets that first down Third and five from the 10 now. Under two minutes left in this game. And that pass misses a wide open George Connor. Should have been thrown a little bit sooner in all honesty. But it should have still been on target. And on fourth and five, we, we had a terrible play call. And we don't get it. But they drop back on third and 12. Rashad Peters catches Ryan T Tannehill in the end zone. I can't even say words right now. And then this happens. A corner round not thrown far enough in front of Kurt Weeks. And it's picked off and we lose the game. Half of me wants the season to end here so that we can spend the offseason, you know, using that XP on Philip Vandiak. You know, use, the, use that offseason to get him better. Because, of course, you can't just get better one week to the next from, you know week 17 to the playoffs so, but we're going to have to obviously go into the playoffs with the current team and it's you know I'm not trying to blame him for decision making but he just seems incapable of putting the ball in front of people I don't understand I look at all the stats and I don't know why he can't you know not that final interception which of course could have been slightly further out or I believe there was a one be was it in this game there was one before that where it should have been further out or the game before that same kind of play 
just doesn't put it out far enough. And then, you know, the one where he missed George Connor, who was open in the end zone, and he threw it behind him. And that was thrown a little bit late as well, but it was thrown behind George Connor, not even on target. And then we had to go for it on fourth and five and didn't get it because we, you know, there was a bad play call. But I just don't know. I just don't know. He has to be good. You don't know what he costs. Well, you do know what he costs us. He doesn't know what he costs us if he thinks he can keep playing like this. We've got to see a vast improvement. This is probably the worst offensive rookie of the year season ever if he actually ends up winning it. So Trayvon Bromley did okay. 12 for 77, I think, leaves him just under 1,500 yards for the season, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Jaquan Barber got himself 60 yards and a touchdown. Receiving, George Connor came back with 100 yards. It was nice. Eight receptions. Not a bad day for him. Trayvon Bromley, 2 for 51. Kurt Weeks, 2 for 23. Juju Smith-Schuster, 1 for 12. Now, these drops, they... Trust me, this was not five drops. They were, you know, on streaks, not putting it out far enough in front of him and leaving him to try and make a catch as he gets hit by a receiver. That's not a drop. Um, a couple where it was put on his fingertips, that's not a drop. Five is an unfair number. But even if it is five, then, you know, we can defend Philip Vandy out with that. But let's take a look at the defense. Hunter Washington with eight tackles. Tyus Bowser with eight. So our linebacker is getting it done. Terrence Brooks with seven. I say getting it done. We lost the game. Nobody got it done. You know what I mean. Two sacks. Tyus Bowser. One for Rashad Peters. This man. Honestly, this man. No interceptions. We, did we get a false one? We did, didn't we? Did we recover it? No, we didn't. That's always a shame. We want to force fumbles and recover it. But Rashad Peters. How how can you choose? If you've got to choose between Rashad Peters, Kewan Hardwick, and then Rashad Bass, who had a quite a game this week. How do you choose who the defensive rookie of the year is? I would say it's Rashad Peters, but, you know, stats win it, not being perfect on stopping pretty much anything that comes your way when it comes to tackling. So we finished the season 11-5. and five. That's disappointing, of course. You know, we, we would have loved to finish strong. Let's see, one player has regressed. Guesses, people. Wow, well, that was... <laughs> I mean, that is, you know, laying it on thick... <laughs> with three but again injuries sacked four times into draft linemen with higher up picks because even though they're good they're just not <laughs> i don't know how else to say that they are technically good but they are just not maybe it's the tackles because well maybe it's everyone but the guards because those guards they can't be bad 86 overalls maybe it's the center maybe it's the tackles who were 77s i don't know but the guy shouldn't be getting sacked four times a game every single game now one thing i will say is when it comes to upgrading trayvon bromley that's going to be fun because he's already got 20,000 xp and he's only going to get a bit more after the season ends i i'd hope he gets probably hopefully um gets into the pro bowl of course we'll look at that at the end of season episode which you know will come in conjunction with the playoffs it's always a bit different we'll have to see when the end of season episode really comes with the stats and stuff but you know before one thing happens before we finish week 17 and teams sign all of their practice squad players to their final rosters we've got something to do to be fair i did think this man was still with the new york giants they can steal many things from us those giants but they can never steal bj wiener come on to the team son now don't don't think this is <laughs> don't think we're going to replace philip van Diet with him we're not but bj wiener is joining the team and he is, he's, he's going to play a big role for us. He's very important to us. I don't know why we're just looking around. We've been, we've been waiting for you, even though I kept forgetting about you, BJ. Get on the team.